Adam, uh, self-preservation by changing the starting time to six o'clock. No doubt you were very conscious of the heat. Yeah, it was a mutual decision. I think it's the right one. Uh, yeah, there's no, no reason to cook ourselves, so I uh, might get a few more supporters there as well. You've brought uh, some senior players back. Um, you must be delighted with the way everything's gone so far, the first two games you've had now coming up. Last major hit out before the start of the home and away season. Yeah, you will have another hit out next week, yeah, probably more of an intra-club style, but yeah, the preparation for our players has been uh, as planned. So we've got opportunity to play most of our senior players and Nick gets a crack at it as well. So, um, you know, it'd be uh, good to play good against a good side again. How's he been? He must be just chomping at the bit, is he? He is. The expectations for us are really low. We're not, we're not looking at an exceptional performance from Nick. We just want to get numbers up. It's been a long time since he's played. So we'll really be conservative with our approach. But... If we get out of the game, you know, 50 or so minutes and no injuries and he just has a good run around, uh, we'll be really happy. Well, I know you've been really big on flexibility. Or well, I know you're saying perhaps maybe we overemphasise that you wanted, there's a lot more to it. But the intensity has been really impressive. From Is that a fair comment, do you think? Yeah, it has. And it's a reflection of the, the previous coaching staff, uh, at the, the work they've done over the years in terms of their work rate and, and their intensities. Um, it's been first class, but it's been in practice match form. So we hope we can, you know, replicate that tomorrow and take that into round one. Just on Nick again, what are, what are the plans in terms of, I suppose, positions? Would he, would he play bulk of it ruck or a lot? Smaller? Yeah, we'll look at that. I, I don't know. I, we're still having a match committee this afternoon. I'm I don't, not super keen to throw him in the deep end first game up. So we'll just see how the game evolves and see how he's feeling. But like I said, the expectations are really low in terms of... Um, you know, how he rucks and all those. Just want to get him out there and, and playing to our system and adapting to, to some new teammates. And well, only playing the 50 minutes this time, in terms of round one, are there any concerns that he might be underdone or would you look to play him as a sub maybe? Oh, look, we haven't thought that far ahead. I think it's part of his progression. There's a couple of games to go before round one. If he gets through tomorrow, we'll, we'll work out what we do after that. Mm. What about the uh, Adam Simpson gospel? Are they taking it on board at uh, <laughs> a comfortable rate? <laughs> Oh, well, at the moment we're, um, you know, we're ticking a few boxes in terms of what we want to do with our style of play. A lot of it's based around, like I said earlier, our work rate. So we're, we're pleased with that. And um, it'd be a bit different playing on the ground. You know, first time under my uh, coaching that we're playing this oval. So that's going to be another uh, new experience as well. So you think that'd be significantly different playing here as to where you've played before? Well, it's a different size ground. So at, uh, in comparison to the two grounds we've played at, I'll, I'll, I'm just interested to see how, how we go. I understand there's a couple to come out of the squad. Are you able to let us know who they are? No, we've got a match committee this afternoon, so we'll make a final decision there. But, uh, yeah, there'll be two or three. Obviously, the squad um, will we'll whittle that down, but there won't be too many surprises. And are you close to uh, your best 22, or are there still a few players audition? Still still some spots up for grabs, for sure. Yeah, we're, we're really undecided with five or six positions, so the next two weeks will determine who gets gets a gig. How, much, how many cards are kept to the chest in these pre-season games. I know you mentioned Xavier Ellis is probably not going to get as much space after the <laughs> first game and things like that. How much do you have to temper what happens with what may happen in round one as far as from a coaching perspective about the way things, the match-ups and the way the games unfold? Yeah, we've been really careful not to overplay some of the individual returns we've had because of that fact. And uh, I think tomorrow you might get a little bit more um, strategic planning in terms of players running with players and um, you know, just honing in on your own systems, and if that means you, Crowley runs with someone, then they might do that. So you know, it's uh, it's good for us as well. It's, we can refine some of the things we want to do, but I think you'll get closer to a, a legitimate AFL game um, across the board, across the AFL over the weekend. Of course, the two games during the year, the the derbies are the mini grand finals for the Perth fans. Some Eagles fans are saying, "Why are we playing the Dockers? We're going to give away all our secrets too early." <laughs> what, do you, what do you respond to that? Oh, it beats travelling. <laughs> so. Uh, we're happy to play them a couple of times. We're playing against you know one of the best teams in the competition, so we're learning every time we play. And uh, you know, obviously, the, the travel factor is a big one in the pre-season. And you'd obviously be expecting a very different Dockers to the one that you came up against first week. Yeah, we haven't looked too too much into that, to be honest. Um, I'm sure it probably will be a different uh, a different team that we play in terms of how they go about it. But I haven't really worried about. It. No, the coaches haven't gone into that detail. Brought a, brought a question on an AFL front. The captains have been very strong about what's happened with Essendon and then the naming of players this week. Have you got a thought on that as a coach in the competition? 
uh, I'm pretty reluctant to get involved in any broader AFL matters at the moment. I'm, I'm a baby with the coaches, um, so I'm not, uh, I'm not willing to throw my hefty weight around at the moment. I'll leave, leave it to the, the big dogs. Your hit out next week, will it involve East Perth? Uh, yes, it will. Yeah, yeah, we need to, yeah we'll combine with them. Yep. Adam, you already got your eye on your opposition in round one, or is it still just about getting your players across the line and two to the first round? Yeah, you're definitely looking at, at you know round one for sure, and how you might match up and who you might play and what you might confront, and that that has some um, rele relevance to what you're going to do tomorrow night for sure. Yeah. How do you think they've gone in pre-season? The Bulldogs. Yeah, the Bulldogs. Oh, look, they obviously they hang the hat on their contested football, so. We're aware of that, and that's, that's widely known. So, so they've got some exceptional inside, hard-working players. So that's something that we're um, we're working towards as well. Mm. And just what, your philosophy on, on handling tag, it's, it's a really crucial element of the game these days. What are you, if you come here with any ideas or or the way that players should handle tags and the way teams can work together to beat tag, is that something that, because obviously you had to carry tags along when you were playing? I actually tagged them yeah, <laughs> probably just as much. Yeah. So I, I think it's a different circumstances with different weeks and different players and it's, it's part of your preparation about what you might confront, whether you're going to run with someone or you've got a player who's going to get tagged himself. So, um, pretty broad answer that, I know, but that's the truth. Yeah, you get... just some of the major playmakers for West Coast are guys that often get targeted. I suppose it's the same with all, with all good sides. Yeah, that's right. And I suppose it's having the, the flexibility to play in different positions and mixing up what you do and not just be a sitting duck is probably something you, you need to look at as a, as a player who gets tagged weekly. How did you guys play on CB Oval, Adam? Me? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a good question. Uh, well, most of my career, I was just your average 7 out of 10 type of play, so I'm assuming it was along the same lines. I, I couldn't tell you that. How you didn't exactly find any space? No, nah, I wasn't a big space finder, to be honest. No.